I'm Allison. I'm Grant. We're with the Winkle, and today, today we're, we're making, making a, a cannon. cannon. Grant, are you so excited for this cannon project today? Oh yeah. This sounds like something that's right up your alley. Should we see what's in our kit? Yes. Okay. Cardboard two, tape, a dowel, one balloon, two rubber bands, some puff balls, one giant brad, plastic discs or buttons, and a six inch ruler. Great, this looks like a lot of fun. On top of everything in your kit, you're going to need a very sharp pencil, yep. your scissors, and you'll need your winkle box or some other box that's about this size, and then we're ready to get started. Let's do it. Grant, did you know that sometimes when kids get their winkle package, sometimes they just pour it all upside down and they let everything come out on the table? Uh, yeah, and then sometimes you get like the parts are lost. So just keep everything in your bag for right now and we'll let you know the next thing we need to get out of the bag. Yep. If at any time in this Winkle video we get going too fast and you're not caught up, you can always pause the video and press play when you're all caught up. If there's yeah. any instructions you didn't understand, you can always rewind the video and then press play again. Okay, we're gonna start by using this flap right here, okay? If you don't have a flap on your box, you're gonna need to find some piece of cardboard that's anywhere from 11 to 12 inches long and about three inches wide. You have your ruler that's in your kit if you need to measure. Sometimes cutting cardboard is too hard for little fingers, but I have a little trick for you, and that is if you take your pointy pencil and poke a bunch of little holes in your cardboard, that's called perforating, and then it's a, actually a lot easier to cut. You're gonna cut the whole flap off so you have one giant rectangular piece. For this next part, you'll need your pencil and your ruler. Okay, Grant, so we need to find the middle of this piece of cardboard. So we're gonna measure it with our ruler. The measuring starts right here at this long line. You see that line right there? Good, okay, so we're gonna always start at that line. So we go to six inches, keep your pencil there and bring the ruler to that measuring line. Six plus five is 11. Yeah, so our piece is 11 inches long. But you at home need to decide how long is your piece of cardboard or your flap. Is it 11 inches, 12 inches? Whatever it is, you need to measure that and then find the middle. So what's 11 divided by two? 5.5. That's right. The way we know that, and it's a little easier, is because 10 can be divided into five and five. Exactly, and then right? half of that. Half of the extra one left half. over, we put on each five, so five and a half. If you have a 12 inch piece of cardboard, what's the halfway point for that? Six. Six, right. Okay, so we're gonna find the halfway point, which we decided for ours is five and a half. For yours, it could be six or six and a half, depending on how large your flap is. We're gonna go to five. That's the five inch mark right there. And half is this long line that's right between five and six. Do you see that? So I'm gonna put a dot right there. And then we're gonna mark one and a half inches from each side of our middle line. Exactly. Okay? So this is one and a half. Right there is the half inch mark. You see that? So from the half inch mark, you're gonna mark that starting point right there. That's one and a half inches. And then over here, there's a half an inch plus an inch, so it goes to three. So we have a three inch space right here, and we know exactly where the middle is right there. Okay, now we're gonna draw a straight line from both of those sides that three inch mark that we did, marks that are on the side. We're not drawing a line through the middle. Okay, and Grant, use your ruler to make sure those lines are nice and straight, okay? Okay, now remember that perforating thing that we did before to yes. help cut our box? Okay, we're gonna do that again on these lines that we have. But we're not gonna cut these lines. We're just perforating it because we want it to be easy to bend. Now see how easy it is to bend? Okay, we're gonna bend those flaps. So now we have what is called our housing. It's going to house our cannon. Okay, now we have our box, and you know what? If you don't wanna deal with that flap, you could cut it off. I think I'm gonna cut mine off. What do you mean? off. You're gonna leave it? Yeah. You're kinda of be in the way. Not I'm gonna cut mine. 
Okay, so we're gonna take our box and we're gonna measure two inches from the top of the box, okay? The side, right here. So we're gonna measure one, two. Remember what the middle is of our box? Mm -hmm. Ours is, half. yep, ours is five and a half inches. So I measured two inches down and five and a half inches across and that's right where I'm gonna make my hole. And we're gonna poke it through? Um, actually, you don't need to poke it all the way through. It's just enough to fit our brad. All right, now this flap that we have right here, we already know the middle going side to side. We need to find the middle going side to side this way. This is a three inch flap. So our middle is at one and a half inches. One and a half inches this way. One and a half inches that way. And that's gonna be the middle. I'm gonna put an X marks the spot right there in the middle. Remember to find the middle, you're just dividing it by two. Okay, go ahead and poke a hole through the middle of your X right there. X marks the spot. And with your brad, you're going to poke your brad through that hole and through the hole in your box. Good, go underneath. You're going to flatten that brad the best you can. Okay, turn it over. Oh, we have a helicopter. <laughs> a helicopter. This is a pivot point right here. Our cannon today is actually going to, we're actually going to be doing like ready, aim, fire. And aiming is so much more fun when you have a pivot. So you don't have to like move your box like that. You're actually moving the housing like this. Isn't that so cool? Yeah, that's gonna be so fun. For this next part, we're going to have our housing and our cardboard tube. We're going to attach them together. But look at this. We wanna be sure our cardboard tube has enough space at the bottom so that it can not hit the housing right there, okay? So you're gonna measure one inch down from the top of your flap and try and give it in the middle. I have a three inch flap again, so that's at one and a half inches is the middle that way and one inch down that way. I, you definitely wanna do one inch down that way. This might depend on the width of your flap. So mine is a three inch flap one and a half inch is the middle. Okay, I'm gonna put an X right there. Measure your other side one inch down and at one and a half inches or whatever the middle is for you, draw your X. Then you're going to poke your hole through the flap. Pivot it around through the X, through the flap on the other side. Grant's flaps are different heights for some reason. I don't know, something happened with his measuring. So what you're gonna wanna do, Grant, to make sure the hole is the same on each side. Just poke a pencil through. No, not just poke a pencil through. We're gonna measure, because we want it to be accurate. But you can measure from the bottom, because they're both the same at the bottom, right? So you can measure up from okay. the bottom at three inches there, right, three and inches. up from the bottom three inches there. Wow, that's really big off. Yeah, I think you're about a half inch off, but it's okay. Don't poke your finger. Did you get it? Awesome. Nope, nope, nope. Turn it around. Turn it around there. That way you can see the X better. Good. All right, we're going to measure our tube. Our tube is a four and a half inch tube. We need to measure the middle. Half of four and a half, well, we know half of four. What's half of four? Two. Half of four is two, so I'm gonna put a line right there. Half of a half, check this out. This is a half inch from two to two and a half. What's half of a half right here? A quarter, okay? So you're gonna put your hole right there at a quarter. This cardboard tube is really thick. Sometimes a pencil won't do the job. You can get it started with something even pointier that you might have around the house, like a push pin or something like that. Then once the hole is started, it's a lot easier to push your pencil through. Check that out. Now the hole on the other side, we actually don't want them to be perfectly in the middle of the tube. We want them a little bit higher because look, our dowel is gonna go through and we actually want our projectiles to be able to go through the cannon. Exactly. And they might get stuck if our dowel is right in the middle. So as you're placing the other hole, Put your dowel like towards the top. See what I'm talking about right here? Instead of having the dowel go through the middle that might block those projectiles, we wanna like push it so it's like this, okay? So the dowel is gonna be in the top part of your tube and there's gonna be that big space in the bottom that will let your projectiles fly out. Okay, so this you're just gonna kind of 
guess I'm gonna mark it with my pencil. No. Start it with my push pin, poke it through with my pencil. Good, push it through. Oh, wow, you already guessed what's next, Grant. Rubber band up. Yes, we're gonna rubber band that into place. You're going to tie that rubber band around the dowel and then push it up as close as you can to that cardboard housing right there. I can show you how to do a rubber band. You're gonna put it around the dowel, twist, around, twist, around, okay. Woo! Yeah! We've got our cannon set up here. Yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> now for the fun part, we're yeah. gonna take our... <laughs> yeah. We're gonna take our balloon and put it around the cannon. So first we're gonna actually tie, I know it sounds backwards, but we're gonna tie the balloon just because it's easier to do this now instead of when it's on the cannon. Okay, and now we're gonna cut our balloon Put the top off just a little bit right there. Get a little trim. Seems like the opposite thing of what you'd want to do to a balloon, doesn't it? Okay, you're gonna stretch that balloon over your cannon and you want to stretch it all the way so that it's tight right here. All right, you're gonna take your tape, unwind it off your stick, and you're going to tape your balloon to the cardboard tube. Remember to stretch it as much as you can. Stretch the other side down. I'm just doing one side at a time. It's easier to manage. Ha! Huh! That's pretty cool. Now you can use all sorts of projectiles for your cannon, right? I just gave you a few, but some suggestions could be like trying some little pieces of Legos, you could try um, a Lego guy. A Lego guy, see if that works. I don't know, your your tube might be too small for that. You could try buttons or um, anything that you might have at home. Now remember, you never want to project it at somebody. That would be dangerous. And never project anything sharp either because we don't want to hurt anybody or ourselves. Okay, are we ready? You're gonna put your plastic pieces into the tube and we're gonna launch one, two, three. Woo! That was awesome. Left in mine. Woo! That was so cool. So Grant, in our shooter, the balloon is acting like a rubber band. When you pull the knot on the balloon backwards, it creates potential energy. Do you feel how that's like, there's so much energy stored in there, it's potential, meaning it could have, it could have some sort of effect. And then when you let go, it converts into kinetic energy, which is the energy that sends the discs flying. Now you can play with velocity depending on how you want to tilt your cannon. So if you tilt it up, you're gonna have higher amount of velocity. If you point it down, it's gonna go straight out. You could also play with different objects that are heavy, that are light, and see what travels farther. Grant, thank you so much for doing this Canon video with me today. Yeah. I sure had so much fun with you. Me you guys, too. thanks for joining us today. If you like this video, please press like and subscribe. Subscribe. That way, every time we come out with new Winkle videos, you'll be the first to know. Also, check out down below for freebies and the Winkle.com. Grant, I would love to see how our friends' Canons turned out. If they have a grown up take a picture or video of you making your Canon or playing with your Canon, make sure they post it on social media and tag us at the Winkle Crate. That way we can see what you made and how it turned out. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thanks. Have Bye. so much fun. <laughs> Bye. Bye.